and welcome to In Game Chats for Saturday, April 12th, 2014. This is Season 8, Episode 15. I'm Scott. I'm James. I'm Matt. And I'm RJ. And in the uh, producer booth back there, we've got Nathan, who is hanging out. He'll be answering your phones. If you'd like to call in and be a part of the show, we'd like to have you. Get in touch with us. Our phone number is 334-272-9228. That number again is 334-272-9228. Check out ingamechat.net for all the links to get in touch with us. You can find us on Twitter at ingamechat. You can find us on Facebook. You can email us, everyone at ingamechat.net. We are streaming the cam feed right now through Twitch. And you can go to twitch.tv, look up in-game chat. There's a ton of pack stuff going on, but you can find us and uh, join in the chat room and say hello and, you know, just interact with us live while we broadcast. Just looking over the chat room real quick. Dennis has joined us. He is not here in the studio, but he is uh, slacking at work and uh, using the internet while he's there. Moltal is in there and Lavos is in the chat room as well. So welcome, everybody, to the show. Uh, I am doing... A ton better, and I hope it comes through and just me talking right there, but I, I'm feeling a whole lot better than what I was, uh, not just the week before last, but also last week itself. Last week itself was not very good for me. You look pretty run down. I was, and I didn't even make it through like half the show before I had to take a painkiller and just kind of sit back, because I just it was just hurt me, and uh, sitting around for, very too, for too long wasn't good. Which is why I didn't get to go to the movies with James last week. That's why I didn't do a pinball thing this mm. past Sunday. Mm. Just because I was afraid of just sitting there for a good amount of time and, and, and just feeling ill. So I got through Sunday okay until 5 o'clock and then pain hit me again. I thought, man, I'm going to get through this day with no, no problem. And that didn't happen. But uh, since then, uh, things have been great. And uh, I've been doing pretty good. So That's good to hear. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm glad of it. And I'm sad to hear that you're last show with us is next week yeah oh, last for show bit. for a good while i'll be back after that though yeah but mm-hmm. not until like december or something but you know it's a long way away yeah so still uh anyway welcome everybody to uh to the show and just before the show we were trying to go over the things like what are we going to talk about and i don't necessarily know that we came to any kind of decision we just hit a bunch of different points of like hey there's something and then we went on to the next thing there's something else trying to figure out what we would discuss. Uh, One of the things that we were talking about were all the different light games. (laughs) Yes. Dead light, daylight, dying light, and trying to figure out where those were, uh, where those were. Which games are which, and... Which is the one that was just shown at PAX? The one that was just previewed, like, uh, yesterday? Uh, One of them. I don't know which one. Well, I mean, that's... Okay, well, whatever. Evil that's within? what I was trying. No, that's <laughs> Evil Within. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's what really got us started is the uh, is the glut of uh, horror, film, horror action, film, survival yeah, horror, games. survival action, uh, first person parkour traversal horror, <laughs> which is apparently a thing now. <laughs> which is know. which is what Dying Light is. Mm. Okay. Dying Light is the one that's in the first person. It has a mix of Mirror's Edge and and Dead Island. When did we know about that? About that game, a good while back. Yeah, okay. it's because it's, it's, I wasn't it supposed to be a launch. I have no for something. Was it for PS4? I thought it was a uh, one of the like, or at least very early. Yeah, I mean, obviously early in the system. But I mean, I remember seeing that when the PS4 was launching, they were having that ad adver- advertised. I, I never saw an advertisement for it. I never saw an, uh, an advertisement, f- uh, an official advertisement for it, other than a trailer you would find online. Okay, I didn't find like some then, like the, I saw the box art at the uh, you know local. Game it was oh, okay, the brain trust comes through a little yeah. bit, by the way. Uh, uh, Dennis is saying that uh, Deadlight's been out for a minute, yeah. uh, which I still don't even know which one that is. That's the Steam 2D sort of, um, it reminds me a lot of uh, Shadow Complex, like in that side-scrolling, you know, action-y kind of thing, but you have to 3D rendered, but still side-scrolling? Yeah. Okay. I still, I have no I have no concept of it. Okay. Don't worry about me. I don't pay enough attention anyway. We do family sharing. You can just grab it from my okay. library. You, you know it. I have it. Yeah. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> um Daylight is the w- daylight is the one that I found interesting. Daylight is the one with the uh, undisclosed Twitch interaction. Twitch interaction. Yeah, um, that will probably turn out to be a terrible mistake for anybody <laughs> willing to allow someone to mess the with Twitch them. chat to participate. But yeah. yes, that I now I remember that one. And Dying Light is the Mirror's Edge, uh, right. Zombie combat. So there, I think we've cleared up. That's I don't think we've cleared up a thing at all. Too many. That's too much of a confusion thing there. Deadlight, daylight, dying light. No dawn light. 
I mean, like, if we're gonna like, just go through all the Romero zombie names, I'm sure something's in the in the works. So, and then the other thing that uh, that Nathan brought to our attention was Soma, which is the uh, underwater. That's the thing that the guys from Amnesia are working on. Yeah, mm. uh, and I can't remember the development company name of them. I'm sure. Someone in the chat room, or Nathan's probably going to look that up real quick and find out, but the development company of them, I, I cannot remember their name. But uh, Soma was something that was announced, and you, you, the first announcement of it was just a screenshot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's all it was, and it looked, you know, nice and uh, atmospheric, uh, like they normally do uh, with Amnesia and, and their other titles. But um, it was... It looked like it took place in space. Yeah. They didn't reveal a trailer for it until, I think, just recently. When you found out that it's not. And it's not taking place in space. It apparently takes place uh, completely underwater, uh, which is uh, an interesting turn of events for them, I, I suppose, just for the fact that it. I think, I think they were initially, that was the swerve they were looking for. It was like, oh, no, you, you think this takes place in space in some abandoned space station. And then all of a sudden, no, it turns out it takes place underwater. So, I don't know. Uh, what do you do in that game? Other, other than survive. be underwater? Mm. I don't know yet. I don't know. I mean, if it's anything like their previous games, Amnesia, you just... Uh, run from creepy things? Run from sound. Oh. <laughs> the you developer was uh, Frictional Games. Frictional. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. See, that's... Yeah. That's, what, that's great. Glad you're in there, man. <laughs> <laughs> So, ma so what made you think it was like space was like some zero gravity Just effect? the screenshots. Just the screenshots. Just screenshots. It, it looked Dark outside, atmospheric. It was all, it yeah, it was just the, the atmospheric and it, the, the... Space is literally not atmospheric, by the way. The, <laughs> yeah, right. Yes. The, uh, the, the environment yeah. looked like a space station. Yeah, if mm -hmm. you, if it was like the opening promotional video, but if you watch it, it's kind of like a dead space look to it, like the way mm. it panned out. So. Yeah, 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 it had, okay. a, it had a dead space feel. Mm -hmm. uh, to it. What so. doesn't but anymore? Then again, I mean, to yeah. be really frank, um, I mean, I know that I generally am not trying to pay attention to absolutely everything mm -hmm. that's coming out um, in any particular genre, even a genre that I happen to like, mm -hmm. but I, I, I feel like I just have given up trying to tell one from the other, trying to really imagine what any one of them might be worth or, or what they might be when they come out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Early, early, early preview information seems less valuable all the time, mm -hmm. and more like to lead us astray yeah. in some way or another. Mm. <coughs> so I don't know. That's just me not paying attention. So um, it's also maybe a very good opportunity for stuff to just show up that I had no idea about. Which I know. I, which and I, then you'll be I surprised. Always, and yes, and be surprised. I'm always happy when that happens, in a sense that hey, I didn't know this was happening. Let me look into it. And then, of course, I form my judgment, you know, about what's going on with, with whatever it is or, or, you know, sit back and withhold my judgment to see more if I'm not just yet convinced. But I'm always – and that was – trust me, that week in the hospital was a great time for stuff like that to happen because I had to hit up you for information because I couldn't follow anything and it had just been too long. And I was just like, is there any news? And you're like, well, Amy Hennig did this and uh, – Dude's out over here at Microsoft, and uh, this is going on. But no, like, no new game announcements until you came over just yesterday. Um, I was like, hey, what's been going on? And you talked to me. You were telling me about, uh, what is it, Sony's H1Z1? Yeah. Oh, see, there we go. There's another one. There's literally not enough room in my brain <laughs> for everything relating to zombies. Am I the only one that, that saw that? Is that, even, is that even real? I saw it after you told I, me about I it. I read the news, and I watched the videos... When I was fairly deep in my cups, and it, it sort of occurred to me that maybe they were just having a laugh, right? Like, maybe they were just being silly, because the... The way they revealed the it? Way, it the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, their methodology and their... I mean, which was entirely wrong. It looked more like a developer diary, the sort of thing yeah. that you would see in the weeks following a polished announcement and a polished reveal, or at least a, a very slight style reveal. And then, but somebody else, because someone else was belly aching. I think that the website has a screamer embedded in it. Ugh. There's like, yeah, there's like a one in ten chance in the in the JavaScript on the page to oh make it a God. to have like a giant <laughs> zombie screamer. And that was there were people that were like, not buying your game. <laughs> 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 nothing, had nothing to do with you. Not not doing it. Not yeah, having they took any kind of personal. Yeah. So, but you know, SOE has <laughs> Sony Online Entertainment has sort of changed their. Uh, uh, change your posture a lot in the last couple of years. So seeing them do an announcement of something like this 
that is unlike what you would expect mm -hmm. is maybe a little more expected. So I, I really couldn't tell. I was like, I, I don't know if they mean this for real. But evidently they're taking their, their engine that they use for Planetside 2 and just turning it into DayZ. I, that's, when I watched the video. Evidently. Yeah, when I watched the video after you told me about it, yeah, I got... That was obviously the vibe that I got from it was nothing but this is this is a let me hop on the bandwagon cash grab let me jump on this train before it reaches the station right. uh, situation for Daisy uh, cloning on a much larger scale from what they can do obviously with Planetside I, I don't actually know the perimeters of Daisy as far as how big their worlds can be I, I have no idea bigish bigish I just know that Planetside is hugerish yeah. I don't know. Is it actually? I mean, are the I, I don't know that the planet side uh, individual map dimensions are bigger than the Arma map. Um, or, well, yeah, actually, I don't I don't know that they are. I believe the Arma maps are enormous, but True. I don't know how they compare directly to the planet side maps. I know that I'm a little for more familiar with their player counts. Mm -hmm. You know, in the hundreds per continent on on planet side too, but that's not really what we'd be looking at in in a uh, open world survival ist type of game i don't know i don't know but he, my my undead cup runneth over yeah and I, I, says why, that I can't why can't says it looked these? awful the uh, the h1z1 thing looked it, awful. it did look awful but to me uh day z looks awful. yeah but i can still i suppose respect what they're trying to do maybe i don't know i i don't know um, were well, they planning to go what into early access in four to six weeks with it? Something like that, which very is soon. itself very, very interesting. Again, this seems rush, rush, rush. Get it to get it out there so that we can capitalize on uh, the soon, momentum as soon as I we can. Well, how are they going to do that? Everything that Sony Online Entertainment produces now is free to play. Yeah, that's part of their new their new their new mantra. It's part of their new business model, and I don't. So I don't I don't know what that will mean. Well, if they're rushing something out to monetize it super quick, and it, if they are not straining a franchise, if they are not um, doing some, if not, they're not capitulating to the free to play market model with a well loved um, brand of any sort, if they're just inventing something out of whole cloth that's copied from someone else's cloth, uh, and then just saying here whatever, I, I, I don't care. It's fine. I, I see. I, I see no issues with it. I can't. I can't get upset. You know. Yeah. I also can't care a whole lot. Right. E like the other way. I'm not in love with it, but. And from what I understand, though, their their games going free to play. However, their 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 early access is paid for. Well, they do that now as well. Final release is free to play. Yeah. Well, that's what they've been doing. Yeah. with uh, Landmark. That's what they did with Landmark. Yep. Which we got a few, we got a few beta things for that. I guess we should give those away sometime. I or did you already give? Those no, away? I no, I did not uh, give them away. I we forgot. Do I have, had we them. do have beta access. Uh, I had some trouble getting their beta client to run properly, though. Mm. I couldn't get it to to install, and I had meant to spend some time with it to make sure that I could understand it well enough before I distributed keys to someone else. But yes, we do actually. You and I both yeah. have have landmark keys. No longer EverQuest Next landmark. Yeah, they dropped that. Way. They they're that. just going landmark. They're just calling. I it went landmark. back and I looked at. Um, I happened to be looking at my emails when I was talking to you through, you know, GChat or whatever, and I looked at one of my landmark emails, and it's just landmark exc exclamation mm -hmm. point. That's it. Like a musical. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> Soe announcement. Landmark is entering, you know, uh, beta or whatever. Closed beta. Yeah, closed beta. That's they're on track. They're on. The, they're on their timetable. So that's at least good. Um, they they had said you know it would be by the end of April that they would move into closed beta. Mm -hmm. So they are at least on track with that. I I did not have a good experience with the alpha. I didn't either. It was incredibly rough. I had an awful hard time dealing with their claim system. Um, it, but it was a but it was an alpha. It was a proper no joke alpha. Is not a piece of marketing. It was not even though the NDA was lifted. Mm -hmm. Um, at least at some point through, you could find streams of it. It wasn't wasn't hard at all to find examples of people playing that game. But I, I had a hard time with it. It didn't click with me. But I'm still, 
I'm still very much in love with the idea. Yeah. So I'm glad to see they're still moving forward. Didn't didn't click with me either. But uh, but the the you you were telling me this yesterday as well that this, that they dropped the name, and I started questioning. I'm like, I either just to get away from the confusion or because. I don't know. Is is the world building of Landmark still going to be integrated into the... I believe that's still... Is that still the plan? I think that's one of the core elements of the game. I thought so, too. But then you drop the name. It doesn't matter. I, I, think, I think dropping the name is about not maintaining an association between a storied fictional world, EverQuest... And whatever you may think of the games, it is an important place uh, with important lore for an awful lot of people. Um, and decoupling that from something that is essentially just, uh, you know, like Minecraft, you know. True, true. I mean, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It was, it was probably never a good... It was a good idea to put in people's minds that these two things are related, uh, but largely in terms of technology. Mm -hmm. But... Not that they can really be expected to live in the same fictional universe. Largely because you can't control what people are making in your construction sim. No. Um, which is to say, naughty bits. Oh. Everywhere. Whole landscapes of towering naughty bits. <laughs> well, a a uh, quote from one of the producers said that uh, they removed it because it implies it's a fantasy game and removing it seemed best for it, for its... Oh, it r uh, implies that Landmark is a fantasy game. Yeah. Okay. So. That's the other way around than what I would have expected. Well, because, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the name EverQuest holds a certain amount of weight. I don't know. Any place with giant landscapes full of... <laughs> naughty bits. Of naughty yeah. bits. Towering, giant, naughty bits. Is had fantasy. best be fantastical. <laughs> and not real. But <laughs> in any case, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's on track. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. I've still got my fingers crossed that EverQuest Next is going to be everything that I hyped it up to be inside of my own head. And that's against my better judgment and every recommendation I ever make. But that's okay. Well, PAX East is going on right now. Has there been anything coming out of PAX East that has, I don't know, piqued your interest uh, that you've seen? I did see um, video for... Star Citizen that came out of PAX East. And Spe specifically? The pre-alpha uh, space combat. Module. It was you know, the dogfighting yeah, module, dog not fighting just the hangar. So, um, Is there anything else before we, before we dive into that? Because we could probably do that next break, but was yeah. there anything else? Th um, I mean, Evil Within was, was shown and apparently... Mixed. Didn't, yeah. Mixed. Like, it was a mixed bag of responses to that. And I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, I don't... I'm not trying to do the game's job for it, but I agree with people that say it's just not... I'm looking at the videos, and I'm not I'm not getting anything. Mm -hmm. I see... It doesn't fill you with that feeling? That it doesn't fill me with any feeling, yeah. you know? Um, I understand exactly what the presentation is supposed to be doing, and it, I felt as if I was able to anticipate the next step at least in terms of the gameplay elements, every single time as I was watching, uh, watching those trailers, I don't, and I don't really like that. And I didn't. Nothing about it looked like it could really match with what I was expecting, um, given the involvement of uh, old boy. Yeah, I don't know his name either. <laughs> I, for I forgot his name. Uh, regardless, it didn't look particularly swift, and it got sort of. I don't know. It didn't get anything like the reception I think they were hoping for. I never, which you seems know, a little bit strange. Even the even the little bits that they showed last E3 uh, didn't hold my interest very well at all. But then again, at the same time, I was being bombarded with this other game being released called Outlast. Mm, yes, uh, which completely did it did what it was supposed to be doing to me. Um, Evil Within didn't. It car Evil Within carried this. Uh, Very polished, polished so much that it took me out of the fear situation. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I, I don't know, maybe it's the, this isn't Capcom, I'm going back to that, but I said maybe that's just the thing, the kind of Because it has Shinjin Mikami in it? Yeah, yeah, maybe that's just the, the thing that Capcom does, but it's not Capcom. That Where were you like thing. three minutes ago when we were looking stupid without knowing his name? <laughs> looking it up? Oh. <laughs> 
Uh, Fair enough. But yeah, it, it, the overall atmosphere, the overall feeling, we go back to that a, a lot, is the atmosphere of things. Uh, the overall feeling of it just didn't... Uh, I was not scared watching it, whereas without last, I would kind of look away a few times, knowing that something's about to happen, or you get that sense that something's about to happen, that you're about to have a jump scare, mm-hmm. or or something like that. Uh, I wasn't getting that out of that of Evil then, but the stuff that they were showing me was mixed in with like this live action shock treatment value of of something going on. It, they hadn't really shown off a lot of the game, and I think this was the first time that they showed off actual gameplay. I guess somebody playing the game itself. And going through it, um, and it came out with you know mixed reviews. Um, so I didn't, I, I wasn't putting a lot of hope in that game anyway. Uh, no, myself. but it's what's hard to understand is whether the game itself is somehow just missing the concept that it was trying to dial in, right? That they were really, really going. They they had a direct aim. They were trying to elicit a very specific response from people as a, as a horror survival or, or horror action game or whatever exactly. Uh, classification it deserves is is it a fact that it's simply not firing on all cylinders is it not doing its job correctly or is it a job that can even be done anymore I mean we were, were joking at the top of the hour but like there's just there's horror games oozing out of mm-hmm. every pore in the game industry it's something that everybody is chasing and I don't know. It's uh, I feel I feel overexposed. I feel I think one of the things that made Resident Evil and Alone in the Dark so unique is the fact that they were like kind of the first back then, you know, to try. They were that, among the first, you know, yeah. You know, survival horror that uh, si- uh, Silent Hill. You know, before that, you know, we didn't really have that kind of survival horror, especially nothing on uh, the graphics back in the day where it was truly terrifying. Now, like you say, we're just inundated with the genre where you know you can only watch so many horror movies before you don't find them scary you know right. unless they have to mm-hmm. up the ante to the ridiculous mm-hmm. at which point it's ridiculous and not and scary then it becomes ridi- yeah exactly then it just becomes ridiculous at, that, becomes at which point it becomes ridiculous. resident evil 5 or resident evil 6 which is ridiculous <laughs> right which is it's perfectly fine if it wants to evolve and morph into that style of God, game. How much but it did, makes you know, we played five. You and I played five together. Yeah. Found no, uh, you know, going <laughs> looking, looking back at that, playing that together. No sense of horror. No sense of scare. I was terrified <laughs> uh, that the, the only time I was really afraid is the the one boss fight with the bug and the thing, and you and I are running around setting landmines or something like that. Uh, yeah. That we would fail and I would have to do it again. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anything that's that required teamwork was scary oh, because it's, it's like, I gotta rely on somebody else to do my to do this a, thing. Such a nightmare. Um, and then there was that point at the end when I didn't actually know what I was supposed to be doing. Uh, but regardless, then we he and I played six together for a little bit. Minutes. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I picked up six and I tried a little bit of it. And that's now, Dennis, I don't know that Dennis says it's great. Uh, I just know he, he's... He found something in it that we didn't that right. that he liked a little bit, and that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Um, Scott and I could not find that thing. No, we didn't. But again, admittedly, look very hard. Here we went through a game and then a bit of another game that has Resident Evil in its title, and yeah. we found nothing scary or horror or survival or even about tense. It. it wasn't. No, and that's. Uh, no tension, no survival lately. Really. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. This is a, this is. Well, would you Ammo, looking back Ammo, at? Ammo's readily available. I mean, yeah. there's no sense of pressure. That was well, no, you hit on a great point there. That's actually one of the biggest problems is there is no... Uh, this is obviously not true in everything, but even in a survival action type game, right? Mm-hmm. Something like even the classic Resident Evils. It's, I have no problems with gunplay. I'm actually a little less interested in things where I don't get to shoot zombies, you know? Mm-hmm. But the scarcity of resources is something that I think was really key to that You had to make every bullet experience. count. Yeah, yeah. You felt every you felt every bad shot. You felt every every missed shot. You yeah. felt the loss of every save ribbon. You know. Yeah, it was the same thing with me because the first Resident Evil game I played was uh, Code Veronica. That was, was a good my one. Very, that was my very first one. Never played the originals. I played the series backwards at the start. You did. I remember talking yeah. to you about this. And you completely yeah, and played uh, it backwards. Yeah, and Code Veronica had you know uh, resources were plentiful in there. And then I just started to go backtrack and play three yeah. and then two, and then I found uh, one from Capcom's warehouse. And uh, like you said, feeling the miss of every shot because, I mean, when you walk in a room with like 
three or four zombies and you have like eight bullets mm-hmm. total and you know they're going to take more than four a piece. Right. <laughs> you know what you want to, uh, you're going to have to back off. Know when to, know when to run. Know when to uh, pack it up and retreat. I haven't, feel, I haven't felt that in a long time in any Resident Evil Resident Evil title. And in general, I haven't felt it in a in, in a survival a, horror in a survi- yeah. in a game. In a it's it's actually very rare that you feel that sort of stuff. You can find those experiences in down certain roads on certain avenues in gaming, but they aren't they aren't as often present in a in a strict, lonesome, very personal single player experience. I think DayZ has that, doesn't it? DayZ very much has that. Yeah, it's I haven't very, played it. And it's very punitive, and that's okay. But DayZ is off in another in another neighborhood doing something else entirely. The fact that there are zombies around is Secondary almost. Yeah, it really is. And it doesn't put it anywhere near the same conversation as Resident Evil. Those yeah. games were W. Matthew says the Metro series is a better Resident Evil game games than Resident Evil is. If hmm, uh, yeah. Anymore. Yeah. Anymore. Well, I mean like even looking back at four, four wasn't I don't think scary. It was a good action four game. Four was a brilliant game. Four was a wonderful action game. It was the pinnacle of that style of game. It was not a very good Resident Evil game. Yes. And but see now what you're doing well, you you are really um, you are really digging very deep into fandom arguments because and this is one of the toughest things talking about the the nature of survival horror games or survival action or whatever you want they span such a wide spectrum now and that's then they are a spectrum mm-hmm. it's really really hard to dial in any particular part of that spectrum and have a discussion or an argument about it that's productive at all because it's it it has become so complicated you can point at resident evil and say this is perhaps one of the best expressions of this type of gameplay that has ever happened there's a reason why everything for the last 10 years has tried to copy it but a bigger problem for people like me and i would say probably for you as well is that it wasn't a very good resident evil game yeah it took a lot of what I would have used to define a Resident Evil game and, and kind of ignored it and decided that they wanted to move in a different direction, that they wanted to they wanted to focus on s- very much on, a, on, on the development of a specific kind of story. They didn't want you to have to deal with scarcity mm-hmm. in quite the same way. Like Dead Space 3? Yes. Only it didn't... You know, obviously it predates it, but yeah. No, it predates it, but it... it in abandoning some of the core elements of Resident Evil, it codified some of the most perfect gameplay that we've had since. It was really good. So you can't slander that game without it sounding like you're attacking it for being what it is. Mm-hmm. And it's it was perfectly good, but where's Umbrella? Where's my T-Virus? Where is zombies? Yeah. Where is the zombie outbreak that's overwhelming me? Like where is where is if it would have had a different you know, name, I'm you know, like if it, if it wouldn't have been associated with Resident Evil, if it had just been like Random Game X, then I, I think we would have cut it a little bit more slack. Instead oh, probably of, because you know probably. again, like you know, I said earlier that uh, with the EverQuest, you know, the names carry weight yeah, and but they would carry you, memories. Would you of have what though? Expectations. I mean, would you have cut it? Lo- or, or we're talking about Resident Evil Four, right? Yeah, I yeah. think I would have because, like, if it was uh, like a new IP, like that gameplay, that style, everything else like that, just you know, take away Chris. I mean, a uh, Leon, take away uh, you know the name of Resident Evil, call it something else. You know, call it you know Dawn Light. I don't know. <laughs> Then I would be you like, really want you really want something thing. to be named Dawn Light. Don't <laughs> I kind of do now, <laughs> but I mean, then uh, then I'd be like, wow, that that was really cool. But the the weight of a Resident Evil carries that sort of expectation of what it should be, of what it has been, and then when it's not, you're like, oh, well, I mean, it's a good game, but it's not like you said, a good Resident Evil game. Hmm. Yeah, you know? that's just my. I mean, that's just my opinion. It's. In- it's again. It's a spectrum thing. It wasn't a huge break. It still kind of was Resident Evil. It just wasn't, you know, it wasn't where a lot of us thought that it should go, and it, and it was no longer the kind of game that I really uh, that I had spent so much time playing. And one of the bigger issues is that at the time, I was actually all right with it. I, I didn't take a stand at the time and say well, this is a wretched Resident Evil game, um, because I had been playing. 
something like the same game for, you know, seven, eight years. Yeah. But in in retrospect, you look back at it and you realize that that's that's when Resident Evil started to disappear as we knew it before. Mm-hmm. So maybe Code Veronica was actually. I don't know. You could make an argument for that. But again, here we're talking about the entire spectrum of within the spectrum of horror games and survival horror. There's an entire spectrum of Resident Evil games. Yeah, it's that's true. it's far too populated. Rabbit hole really. goes deeper uh, with just uh, when you're when you're taking that because you're taking you're taking that broad chunk and then there's a there's a broad chunk within that chunk and then it just keeps going further anyway we got to take a break uh when we come back we will have more of in-game chat i'm sorry about the labeling of this hopefully the music is obvious enough all it says is title and end credits so here you go And welcome back to in-game chat. That is music from Bayonetta, provided by our own RJ. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. So thank you for that. I knew you'd recognize that. But anyway, welcome back to the show. Uh, before we went to break, we were talking about uh, well, we were talking about what we saw at PAX East and some of the videos that have come out from from PAX East. And do Matt had mentioned Star Citizen. But before we go on that, do we want to mention that uh, they're making a new PAX? PAX South ish. Yes. In. In so San Antonio, Southern United States, Pax, Te- yes. Pax Texas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I this I may, this may not make any sense to anybody else. Um, in the southeastern United States, we consider ourselves the South. There, we, it's the Southeast. That's fine. Uh, it is the Deep South. That's also fine. Uh, there are any number of other things you can call it. So when someone says the South, referring to the American South, that's us. Yeah, and mm-hmm. then they say Texas, and it's like, no, man, Th- no, that's no, no. west. That's Texas. That's way, way out west. That's like eighteen-hour drive from the south. <laughs> it's no yeah. more south than you know, Arizona is. This it's no, no, no. That's Texas. Let them be Texas. I'm sure they're perfectly happy being Texas. Call it Pax Texas. I don't care, but it's not the south. Yeah, I still think if they want to do a uh, Pax South, they should do Atlanta. Nobody ever somewhere wants to do anything somewhere in we could drive to. Somewhere we can drive to. Yes. Because, yes. Mm. you know, I'm selfish that way. Right. I, I would like to be able to go to one. It's, yeah, it's uh, c- conventioneering in Atlanta can be a miserable experience. So I understand why people don't do it. But you were talking about Star Citizen. Yes. Uh, saw the, uh, they had a 12 minute uh, s- dog fighting video uh, for space combat for Star Citizen. It was pre alpha, so very. Right, and they haven't shown Unpolished. anything yet of. I mean, this was the first we've been seeing of gameplay that's of, not hangar stuff. Of that's not the 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 hangar module, and so they had. I don't know. It was the strange. It was the strangest piece of footage. I still think for such early work like that, just don't show footage of it. Yeah, I. It's it's I too early to, to show. Like, yeah. You know, wait till it's a little bit more polished. Wait till it's like in beta when people are playing it and then be like, all right, here's, you know, we'll, we'll flesh it out a little bit more, but, you know, here's the rough. When it's so rough like that. It was very rough. How did you feel? I mean, how did you feel about it? I told you that I didn't like it and I, I'm afraid maybe I I didn't want to color your initial reaction. I, uh, well, for me, I mean, my nostalgia filter automatically kicks in when I see space and lasers and flying. And that well, I was just crying last week about how I don't ever get to, you know, yeah, get in the cockpit anymore. So when they actually showed the guy jumping into the cockpit, flipping on his helmet, and uh, taking off, 
And I was like, okay, that that's something interesting. The I thought the the missiles didn't feel like they had any weight. <laughs> I or anything. I felt. I, I know I it's phase, yeah. But no, no, yeah. no. I feel I feel so bad about this. I I could not stand the sound of the weaponry. Yeah, it was so completely. It was terrible. It, it's I, it really didn't feel very good or sound very good. I mean, it was you know pew. Yeah. Pew. <laughs> like the little, you know, the little sound that the thing would make uh, in, in the Asteroids game. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what it sounded like oh God. to we're me. We're talking like a holdover until the finished product comes I out? I don't know. I hope so. I don't know. I do, too. <laughs> if that's the case. I do, too. <laughs> but I mean, it certainly looks good. Like, it, it looks good. The ships themselves are, and this has been proved now for months and months, the ships themselves, uh, as seen in the hangar module, are brilliantly realized whether you like their designs or not they are kind of adorable in mm-hmm. how well crafted and and how thoughtful modeled i mean they're, they're, they're yeah, modeled how thoughtfully or modeled they are yeah but as with anything else like this you chuck it out in space and all of a sudden it's just it's it's a it's empty space b it's just so much other tiny little dots and blips running around which is Okay, that's a little bit how you would expect space combat, if it existed, yeah. to look. But well, there's a point in the video where he actually uh, uh, flipped backwards, and he's like, "Look, everybody, I'm still flying in one yeah, direction." Newton- but Newtonian, yeah, yeah, and everyone's like flipping their lids, going, "Oh my god!" And I'm yeah. like, yeah, "What's the big deal? We've been doing, you know, this isn't new." That okay. Well, now, see, now you're actually pointing a- out something that I that I'm afraid also had an impact on me, which was that the video was. It was a direct feed, an edited direct feed of what was being played, but it was the it the audio overlay from the convention floor. Yeah, and so you had the reactions of the people in the crowd when when they we got into the cockpit. They're all screaming and clamoring. Yeah, and it's like, all you know. those people are having their own moment on the show floor, reacting, over reacting because it's fun. Yeah, but it. I'm really I, looking I mean, in their defense, I can understand because, like, when you're in the moment, when you're actually seeing it live, I'd probably overreact too. I'd be, you know, screaming and no, because I've you're you're a part of that mob. You know, I won't say mob mentality, but you're in that you know event mm-hmm. and everything. The event mentality. Now, watching <laughs> it is like a mob, yes. but you know, watching it, you know, one, you know, removed on my, you know, on my TV, then I'm just like, oh, uh, okay, it's right. more of a just an annoyance, a noise. Right. Um, I I don't like. I mean, not not to get I guess super nitpicky, or whatever. But like you know, I don't like how the when you lock on with the missiles, how every single time the uh, the reticle like sort of I like didn't, yeah, zooms I didn't. it like piece by piece like as it you know locks around you know with the missile lock. I was like, uh, uh, okay, I guess that's one way of doing it. I wouldn't have done it that way, but sure. Uh, quick, um, quick question. I, I don't, I'm not really sure about the game. It, was this a Kickstarter game? Uh, yes, this is the one that got like forty million dollars. Um, it's still continuing to like yeah, build. So, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, because well, what I had pulled up, it said Kickstarter ended. It was at two million, and I wasn't sure if this was the right game. They yet, so. their Kickstarter ended yes. uh, at a, at a really great level, but they have maintained um, crowdfunding through their own source through th- directly through Robert Space Industries. Mm-hmm. Their site primarily by selling packages of, of ships and ships and weaponry and layout. insurance yeah. and things that will be later included in the game. Now, this has led to a lot of arguments uh, and mistrust by a lot of the people in the community saying that, yeah, okay, we're, I mean, what did we say last week? I think somebody told us in the chat room they have topped 40 million, yeah. 40 yeah. million dollars, yeah. Yeah. specifically through crowdfunding and by selling futures, essentially, mm-hmm. you know. But I mean, kind of. That's what Kickstarter is, also. No, no, no. That's that's fine. But at a yeah. certain point, you begin to think that you're. Uh, it's very good that you have the money, and you can certainly put it to work. But oughtn't you be working on the gameplay and not just more ships? You know, not just mm-hmm. another weekly unveiling of another ship package or a right. redesign. When do of you stop? When ship? do you stop building the DLC and start right. working on the game? Yeah. Right. In a sense. Wh- when do you have all of your features <clears throat> locked in, mm-hmm. and then you start iterating the design? Yeah. When do you start? And when do you stop the pre-order bonus? Yeah. And, and begin working on your game. Yeah. I, I guess full disclosure. I guess I should say that uh, I am a little bit. I, th- I kind of feel biased because I did uh, fund it in Kickstarter. I, I put down I think seventy-five bucks 
or so. So, you know, once it comes out, I'll be getting my copy. So I am really excited about it, and I really hope it, it will be something. But, ag like, again, as I said earlier, that pre-alpha footage was just underwhelming, I think. I, I feel like it was on point right up to the moment when he started horsing around. Mm. And I know, I think it's fair that he was doing it. I think he was actually doing something that many of us have begged for previously. Uh, first thing that pops into my head, right? Several years back, uh, you come back from E3, you're talking about how, how, how very blown everybody's mind was watching the, the, the gameplay demo of Bioshock Infinite, mm -hmm. the one that never happened. Right. And I told you why I didn't trust it. I told you that it was why I distrust crafted, guided gameplay. Because it isn't how a real person interacts with an environment. There was no... The guy didn't go off and poke into a corner and dig through a trash can. He didn't try to open every single door that was never going to respond to him in any fashion. He didn't try to stretch the limits of what of what interactivity was going to do in that environment it was too yeah. scripted i it know was exactly incredibly scripted. Point, yeah in fact right. it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't live gameplay it was just a video of gameplay but the way that the guy played it was one of those it's in first person mode right that's not how people would he play. was using the first person mode as the camera in a sense okay so slow pans mm -hmm. no hud to get in the way right. uh you know that sort of thing making it very cinematic Mm -hmm. Until the action kicked in. And even when the action kicked in, you could see it's like, this guy's really about to die. And then, of course, he doesn't, and everything else is not, you know, just gets through it, no problem. It's it's a presentation. It's it's one of those things, and it's fine. Just don't go claiming... This is game. Don't play. go running off and, and, and you know, claiming that, that you saw Final Build or whatever this case is. This was just, this was something built for you to see mm -hmm. it run. It was a vertical slice, and it was presented... Yeah. In, in a very and even more so way. Uh, for for that example even more so we didn't even see that stuff I saw was not even in the game uh, when it released so but I mean not to bag on something that we've already mentioned yeah. before but that was my first thought when I was trying to temper my own disappointment at, at seeing seeing the Star Citizen uh, dogfight module and just being very underwhelmed I thought at the very least. He's not putting me on. Right, he's player. He's yeah. just he's playing. He, he almost crashed into an asteroid. He's like, whoa, that was. Well, that was he crashed his ship a couple of times. Yeah. He admittedly put on an invulnerable mode just so he could bonk his ship into an asteroid over and over again to just show people what it would do. He was in that moment, perhaps not entirely aware of where he was. Um, he seemed to be messing about like the 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 proud programming father of of a video game you know that's still cooking and he was really really interested in just showing people all the neat little things that it could do and all the weird little bits that were currently in the game but you know yeah, don't mind all this other stuff it's a work in progress even though the entire internet was looking you know the entire internet was looking over his shoulder it was a very underproduced piece of footage and i think it's terrible because we've argued. I've argued this point before, and I still find myself reacting emotionally in a way I know I shouldn't. But I didn't see a whole lot of anything that I liked. I just have to remind myself that I don't think I saw any lies. There were a lot of things going on in that video. It was sort of garbage. I, I think that the weapon sounds were awful. Uh, I wasn't particularly impressed by Newtonian physics, but... You know, between you and I, you're talking to a couple of people that played the end of the well, Independence War. Yeah, games. That, uh, you know, like that's We've that is doing old, this for a bit. Slow simulation, and it filled that need. And boy, would it not like it would be magnificent to have a game like that again. Um, it would be magnificent to have another, you know, fighter jock seat of your pants arcadey style game as well. And I don't exactly know where between those two things Star Citizen will fall. It looks like it's going much closer to the simulation side, but regardless, it looked unfinished. It was clearly unpolished, obviously. Uh, there were a lot of things that were probably placeholders, like you say, RJ, but mm. it didn't look like lies. It, it looked like anything but a lie, and I have to, I suppose now, it's occurring to me, I have to give credit for that. It mm. was Incomplete. There were no other players out there. The AI was as stupid as it could possibly be. 
It still has time to grow, though. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's and it's worth pointing out that those things, those those sounds and those images, the nature of your cockpit and your ship and your, uh, you know, for anybody that never played a lot of simulation mm-hmm. or, or space combat games or something like that, that's your world. That really is your entire world. The way your cockpit looks and feels, the design of the heads-up display, the sounds of the weapons. Um, as an example, going back to... Uh, uh, Star Lancer, uh-huh. right? Star Lancer had every one of those components dialed in so perfectly. Yes. And every one of those elements came from uh, an Old War type of place. The design... Like World War II The motif space. was all Cold War yeah. or, or Second World War. So when you had... Where you have a spaceship carrying space torpedoes in a space war, right? It doesn't matter. They still sounded like those old torpedoes from like Das Boot or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because torpedoes, you know, because you're because you're tying it into to a really ancient mm-hmm. uh, kind of fictional DNA, and it really really worked. And so I, those, I look at yeah, the sound had weight to it when you fired it. Right. It had that nice old right. It sounded like a, yeah, and it sounded like a torpedo yeah. flying through water. I'm thinking of rocket pods right now. The way they sound. Right. You let right. Them go off. You know. Yeah. I it, remember those. It was, it was really 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 excellent. Everything sound and and seemed Even to like smell the, perfect. The guns, you know, fire the guns, and the right. shells were flying out the back. Yeah, end it was it was really good. Yeah, it was really really good. <sighs> and those are the details. And obviously, we can't expect Star Citizen to have any of the details correct at this point because it's too. It's still early. a baby. It's yeah. still a little little baby. But I I worry because I believe that that was perhaps one of the most honest pieces of footage I've ever seen uh, that was in, meant intentionally for public consumption. Yeah. Um. But kind of made me, you know, wrinkle my nose a little bit. Um, regardless, it was it was an interesting it was an interesting moment, um, and the real problem is, frus- is frustration. I, I want I want give me now, give it to me, give it to me completely perfect and flawless and amazing, and make it be revolutionary because everything must be, and give me all my innovations right now because I want it now. As slow moving as this game is, Star Citizen, <clears throat> I can only hope that this video for you guys uh, serves as a progress report later on down the line to see that here's where it was, here's where Let's they are now, be, yeah. because they're going so slow on this thing <laughs> that the next time you see anything of it will likely be at next year's PAX. No, at PAX Prime. I mean, yeah. You know, very likely at PAX Prime this year in Seattle. Um, I, I, you, I don't, you won't see anything at E3 probably, but uh, at PAX Prime maybe they'll have, maybe they'll have something updated. It may be a year before you see another video from, from these guys for this thing just because of how slow they're going. And hopefully that time is spent and you can see, ah, they've made improvements now. And it's still a long way off even when you see those improvements so that it gets to the point that you want that perfection you want it now that sort of thing oh that's no that's my irrational childish okay completely unfair thing i'm just i i only point that out because that's the thing that's in all of us all the time essentially the announcement of a game uh kindles the desire for the game mm-hmm. and so you you essentially just live this extended period of time um with nothing but desire and and not fulfillment uh to answer a couple of things in the in the chat room um Multi wanted to know specifically what it was that we or I didn't like so far about Star Citizen. And it is mostly that in this particular video, we're talking about the, not about the, 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 the demonstration qualities of just how a ship looks, but the active, this is the first glimpse we've had of, this is what it's going to look like when you fight other ships. And it didn't look good at all. He didn't effectively fight a lot of other ships. The damage modeling wasn't complete. A lot of the weapons weren't working properly. He even seemed to have some problems, you know, in his own game, uh, getting it to come together. So, in terms of what we saw, it just wasn't functioning correctly. But honestly, that is okay, because he didn't really claim otherwise. Yeah. It really was a sneak peek. Uh, beyond that. It's like what we said previously. I'm just, I'm, I'm just suspicious that we've spent so much time earning money and not enough time spending our money in the Star Citizen universe. They've done quite well. I have n- never seen anything like this. Something crowdfunded, totally, perfectly crowdfunded to that level. Mm-hmm. 
but you know well like i said hopefully future viewings of whatever that they're working on it gets better for you yes. uh, I, hopefully it doesn't stay the same that would be bad i'm sure it uh, it's won't. not gonna get worse of it will hopefully it's not gonna get worse <laughs> but <laughs> it's a space game what yeah. am i am i gonna not play it <laughs> come on <laughs> yeah Come on, I can bellyache from now until whatever decade that game actually comes out. I'm there. I'm going it's to be a part of it. It's been since we've you know, strapped into a, a Star Fox. And they haven't, given any kind of, they haven't given any kind of expectant date on that, do they? They were doing that oh early no. on. They were talking about... Well, Kickstarter has to have an expected yeah. date. No, 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 but, but they were talking about... Uh, 2016? 2016? They, they were talking about benchmarks for, for a lot of the early alpha products. But I, I was about to ask you guys that because on the wiki it says estimated quarter one of 2015. And if right. it's still in pre-alpha, you know, there's no way. No, well, we've already missed. I mean, I mean we've already missed at least one thing, I think. They were looking to have, s I mean, some other element, I think, post-hangar uh, module. Because if you buy... Uh, your ships, if they're of a certain, you know, some of the ships, if you invest in them, you can go sit in them right now. It's mm -hmm. like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, at, at most, you know, at the end of the first quarter, it would be 11 months away. So, I mean, that would right. never happen. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know that they're going to make that, that, yeah. um, that time frame. I don't know. So, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're still doing what I want. Yeah. And not many other people are. Very true. Uh, when we come back, we will have more of in game chat. If you'd like to get in on the show, you can give us a call 334 272 9228. That number again is 334 272 9228. We'll be back with the second hour of in game chat in just a moment. Here is music from Blue Stinger. And welcome back to In Game Chat, the second hour. If you want to get in touch with us, our phone number is 334-272-9228. That is 334-272-9228. You can call in, be a part of the show. That is music, uh, again, provided to us by RJ there. Music from Ill Bleed. I don't remember what that was. It was a parody of all those survival, well, survival, survival horror, horror again? It was a parody of a, of a survival horror game. More campy than uh, horrific, though. I like the uh, that has a fun sound to it. it had, that was a fun song. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now is it campy like a uh, Deadly Premonition, or? Mm, 
Not no, more, no, more, more uh, humorous than that. Okay. Yeah. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty fun, pretty unique at the time I started playing it on uh, Dreamcast back in the day. But uh, yeah, it was really nice. Really, it was like a Dreamcast title face. then. Mm -hmm. Dreamcast okay. title. Was it? Who was? Who were the? Who were the developer? Was it Sega? Was it? Uh, it was on Sega uh, from the folks who made uh, Crazy Sega, Games. Crazy Games. Yeah. No, oh, mm -hmm. interesting. All right, well, welcome back to uh, the show. Like I said, there's the number. Nathan put it in the chat room, 334-272-9228, if you would like to join us, be a part of the show, and throw out any questions, throw out any topic of conversation that you would like us to try and discuss, and maybe we'll do that. Uh, anything else? Uh, maybe not necessarily from PAX. Did you watch the... Did you watch the... Yeah, the NVIDIA... Tech demo f Watch Dogs video? No. The NVIDIA integration no, for PC? I didn't. It would make me feel bad. Why? I, I have an AMD oh, card. Oh, you have an AMD card. That's right. So when I look at videos of, of tech features specific to a particular vendor or card or something like that, I get cranky. Uh, and I, didn't, I really didn't want to get cranky. There's already <laughs> plenty to be sort of cranky about regarding Watch Dogs. I didn't right. need another thing uh, feeding into my doubts. If it's hard for me after the, the stuff that they pulled already for me to um, buy into any video that is released that looks different. Um, oh, about what you mean about Watch Dogs? About Watch yeah, Dogs, yeah. yeah. So it's hard for me. It's hard for me to buy that what I saw because what I saw of the Nvidia integration for PC looked very good. Looked much. What did it? What it, to what benefits do you have? Uh to what benefits? Oh, what does it do? Hmm. Obviously, uh, in the the uh, environment. Um, the well, I'm pretty sure I'll have an environment as well. <laughs> I know my, you will. On, I'm on just saying car. the Nvidia I'm one will have like more environment. Right, but I mean, right. this is really what I'm trying to get you to to say. What what were they showcasing? What were they demonstrating? Uh, the TXAA. Okay. The uh, what is it? HBAO. Okay. Effects. They were showcasing those. Uh, I want to say it was just those two effects that they oh. that they showcased. I'm um, all right then. It was not a very long video, mm -hmm. but the video looked better than the video they showed us a couple of weeks back. Okay. Um, that they said, "Hey, this is here, here's Watch Dogs again." Yeah. Sometimes the vid sometimes they look better. Sometimes they they don't look right. better. Um, it is at this point, regardless of what my feelings were previously, this would be one of those games that I would have to play just to see what the what it really is. Yeah, really. The all of the press materials, uh, intentional or unintentional, things that were for the PC or for the consoles, like regardless of platform, it has been such an incredibly. I'd be interested to know if it's bag. playable on the show floor at PAX. I feel as if we would have heard something yeah. from someone. I and haven't sought information. And I'd be very suspicious if it was not <laughs> mm -hmm. available, you know, right uh, now. Not at this point. Not. I would not at this uh, point. Because if I were them, I'd just be like, just stu nothing, nothing. You get nothing. We're not going to feed this uncertainty anymore. Uh, we just, just shut up. It'll be out in May. <laughs> And that's it. And then you can say whatever you want to say about it. Yeah. Because everything that they've tried to do, to either, they have either made their situation worse by, uh, by being either indiscreet or by being dishonest to some degree. Mm -hmm. uh, real quick, there's a hands-off demo uh, running on the PlayStation 4 at PAX East. Okay. Interesting that it, yeah, they, seem much, they seem most confident in their PlayStation 4 build. It's the one that they've yeah. shown for the last year and Good a half, while, year, yeah. more. Um, but, okay, that's good. Is it just video? Hands-off demo, though, I guess, Hands means off. that it's probably being played by a representative. Somebody's playing it, playing the okay. same section over and over again for the theater for the people to right. shuffle in. And uh, do I anything. suppose that's the right thing for them Which to do. It's exactly what they're doing at PAX Prime. Right. You came in, and they were, they were focused. The, the theater presentation that they were doing was a hands-on it was a hands-off demo, but it was somebody playing it. But they were featuring the second screen application, where somebody is that still a thing? I have no idea. You know, that was I thought that was pretty cool. God, that was I back in that was back in September. Right, you realize who knows <laughs> who knows exactly what it is anymore. Yeah, my, my biggest worry is that remember it was supposed to be out already. So, it was. You know, oh yeah, that, that's the biggest thing. Like this isn't like a new game. 
this was supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, I, I know that you were probably with it. You were probably in the chat room with us at that time when all this stuff came out, and we, you know, mm-hmm. we were shocked ourselves to find out that they delayed it a month before release, just yeah. a month before release, and it was a delay indefinite. It wasn't a uh, we're pushing it back three weeks. Yeah. It was a you know, we're just not going to put it right. No, right it now. disappeared. Yeah, it's gone, yeah. and it was and it was gone, and we talked about it leading into the months and stuff. We talked about. Man, we haven't heard anything about this. When's it coming back? And then they finally show it off, and it looks like crap. Uh, and then they claim, nope, that's our PS4 version. Oh, it was having a bad day. Oh. Uh, that build was having kind of a bad day, and it was sort of, you know, that's not... No, 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 really, it's great. Really, it's excellent. And this other one, yeah, the PC can do cool stuff, sure. Yeah. What, you want to see it? Ah, uh, I don't <laughs> have that around. Here's the PS4. So the PS4 version is great. Yes. Okay, thanks. Where's the Xbox version? Where's the last generation version? Mm -hmm. We haven't seen hide nor hair of that. No one's really interested in passing around last generation imagery anymore. Um, Much like that Titanfall uh, thing that they were going through. Yeah. But You played that on the 360. I I did. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that in a minute. But um, no surprises. Yeah. Spoiler. Uh, I feel like there's really nothing they could do at this point. I can't trust the footage that excites me. I probably shouldn't trust the footage that aggravates me. Um, Their mixed messaging is horrible. It's Ubisoft, so I'm already not particularly happy about layering Uplay on top of Steam for the PC version. Not that that was terribly problematic in, in... Parker 3. I, it didn't have any issues with I didn't that. have any problems and with it in, Assassin's, it in Assassin's, Creed. Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I didn't have any problems with that. But or it's certainly the, nothing to get... It, or Splinter Cell. But it's nothing to be happy about. There is no reason to be happy about it. When your best possible experience is, well, it didn't ruin my day. <laughs> <laughs> it's not... It's it's a canard for, for, mm-hmm. for people to use against you. And at this point, everything you do, everything you do increases the problematic nature of of messaging about this game. It is one of the most complicated game releases I've ever seen, and for that reason, it's very fascinating. It is. But I just, it doesn't matter. They could show me anything. They could 100% show me honest-to-goodness, real, legitimate PC gameplay, and I would never, ever believe them. I don't care how good or bad it looked. I will never believe anything but my own eyes at this point. It's a tough spot for them to be in. That's why. That's why that they're here. when I was telling you, seeing the Nvidia showcase stuff, it's like I, I'm still, you know, you've you've uh, you've lied to me before. I say lied, but whatever, you've deceived me or something like that. I don't know what the what I'm trying yeah, to sure, say. Yeah, sure. There's is. a huge gulf between those two terms. Um, it's it's just hard for me to take anything you show me now as any kind of situation of ah, eh, I don't. I'll know it when I see it. Mm-hmm. I know it when I'll see it. When I mm-hmm. play it, that's when I'll know. Uh, that's what it's come to now. So, um, a couple of people in the chat room uh, wanted to bring up the new Civilization game that was announced today. What? Um, Fraxis had a uh, panel at PAX where they announced uh, uh, their tease was a new AAA title. Uh, they showed off a trailer. And it is Civilization Beyond Earth. It's spiritual successful successor. I uh, see words written in the chat room. It's mute. That say that it is the, it is claimed to be the spiritual mm-hmm. successor to Alpha Centauri. Yes. Yeah. Them's big words. <laughs> yes. And I don't even know that you know. Oh, that's, I don't. I don't. That's big stuff. I have it on GOG. I have not played it. Ah, I, I, I don't know. That's no fooling you around. You don't, just, you don't just say that, yeah. man. You want to think that SimCity upset a lot of people when that was broken? You break this, oh, that's a whole other level. You of break this, you break hearts. Yes. Mm. No joke. You don't, you don't, you don't, and, uh, especially if you're trying to say that, like, well, you know, this is, you know, you want another Alpha Centauri? Here you Here, go. Yeah. From, you know, like us. <laughs> you better, <laughs> you, you step very carefully. Tell me why. Oh, man. Alpha it is, it is. Especially, I mean, you're not just telling me. You're telling yeah. uh, probably other listeners who are a lot like I me. I think for that type of game, uh, you know, the Galactic Sim and everything, mm-hmm. Alpha Centauri is almost sacrosanct. I mean, it, it is. is because it did it best, and it was the last thing that did it the, best. Yeah. It hasn't been improved upon in oh, how many years now? 15 years? Yeah. Was I'm, I'm, was this 99 as well? I, I guess practically <laughs> everything held sacred by the gaming community, at least on the PC side, it was 99. 
Um, but it was yet another thing that reached a level of perfection and has not been improved upon since. And it doesn't necessarily need Im improving, I guess, but, but time has moved on. Technology has moved mm -hmm. on. There are a lot of other gameplay elements. There are a lot of other mechanisms that could be built into a game like that. But it is, it is well loved in the same way that, uh, in much the same way that something like Free Space <laughs> 2 is. Right? Uh, yeah. You don't just say, hey man, here's like, here's my thing, and it's like the new, uh, it's like the new Free Space, you know? It's, we're, we're going to do our space combat sim, it's going to be just like that good. It's going to be that thing. Alpha Centauri was released February 99. February 99, yeah. of course. <laughs> Just still goes to uh, to prove that fact. Um, I was reading an interview uh, that they that they had done. I think it was PC Gamer maybe had done with with one of the guys who was working on this, um, where he talked about the story. They give you pieces, but it's up to you to fill in the blanks on some of the story and the lore. I guess um, I've never again. I never played Alpha Centauri, so I don't know how that works. I played Civilization. I don't get a story out of Civilization. No. I don't, so I'm not sure. Did Alpha Centauri have a story? Dennis says there's heavy with, it was yeah, heavy a game with that lore. was heavy with lore. Yeah. What does he mean? Oh, man. I mean, um, it, had, it had, Alpha Centauri had a, had a, my thought in my head right now is Alpha Centauri is Civilization in space. Is that wrong? Uh, it's, it's incomplete. Okay. That's very incomplete. I don't know how. I don't know how to describe it to you, uh, particularly since I'm not one of the people that reveres it. I recognize it as a sacred thing, but it was never my thing. Yeah. If that makes any sense, mm -hmm. I can't tell you from the position of a person who loves it dearly. I think Dennis probably could. He could probably explain to you in detail why and how it differs from what you're expecting. It's not just something that you use to click away time. It's not something that you use to just while it away. Yeah. Um, and even if it was, you can take that, you can have that kind of gameplay and steep it in a world rich with lore. And that's, I'm not story saying such as it is can be indirect or, yeah. or hidden to some degree. I'm not, I'm, that's not, I'm not, I'm not looking at it, having that and being cautious about it. Trust me. The fact that it can be civilization in space is enough. You know, you want to add in some more elements to it, that's fine. You've already had me at Civilization in Space. That, that works for me. Um, I just never experienced it. I, I, I'd heard plenty of talk about it. It was, I think it was on GOG that I picked it up. Um, just never installed it or played it or anything. Um, mm -hmm. Wasn't sure I wanted to get into it because I was afraid of... Uh, I was afraid of just being distracted by how it would look now compared to then yeah. type situation where I would lose interest and it wasn't a game that I was prepared to lose interest in I still like that it is a myth of great gaming in my head something I've never played something that I really should have played one and of the best games you've never played yeah exactly uh, I kind of like that it still sticks in there not saying it would be bad if I played it I'm just I know how no, I am I, with the distraction of things and how they look what I would tell you is that it is I don't want to try to say that it is timeless but Strategy games have an ability to hold up in a way that uh, Others, action games yeah. don't. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're you're not particularly concerned about. It's not a first person shooter. It's, it's not a third person shooter. It's not a. It's none of those things. The interface is still simple, and I I don't think has aged poorly. No, it's a good it's a good point because just as you said that, I thought of. Is there anything that I do that with? And Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 is one that I do. Yeah. Looks like crap, but plays so great. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, is it compared to, compared to what I see. Stuff. Yeah, compared to what I see today. But there's something still enduring about how it looks that just still works. Diablo so, 2 is the same way. Yeah. There are an awful lot of games that, yeah, okay, they, you can tell these come from an entirely different yeah. decade. Yeah. But it, it doesn't really matter because the gameplay isn't impacted at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. That's uh, that's still that's still uh, the, the, those are big words. They are. That's a hell of a thing to say, man. Yeah, they released a trailer. There is no gameplay in that trailer, but they did release a trailer um, to make the announcement, and it's due out this fall. Hmm. PC. 
when the, when the logos came up at the end of the trailer, there were there were no console logos. Oh, no, not no, surprised. No, 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 no. You no, no, you yeah. can't. I, it doesn't belong there. Yeah, <laughs> this is not a console game. It doesn't. I mean, I guess they can do it. It's clear that they can do civilization on the consoles. You know, you can do that kind of strategy game on the console, but um, I don't think the console. I don't want to say mentality, but you know the the feel of the consoles. I don't think is right for that. Uh, it, I think it's no. I think a, a strategy game designed around the limitations of a console is perfectly fine. Uh-huh. But it needs to be in a lot of the, you know. It really needs to be at the forefront of of the designers' minds mm-hmm. that they're making it for the console. Otherwise, the complexity that really enriches the experience for PC people has a tendency to suffer. Um, and I, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't, I, th- yeah. I think that the, the two of them certainly deserve the best versions of whatever they can get on their respective platforms. But the strategy games are one of those things that I don't really think work as multi-platform. Well, games. they haven't put a pure Civ game on consoles yet. The only one they did was Civilization Revolution. Mm-hmm. That was it. And it worked. But they never, but the odd thing is, is that it worked and they never did it again. Well, how well did uh, Halo Wars Worked work? Worked is not the same as sold. True. Yeah. Very, very Halo true. Halo Wars worked yeah. surprisingly well. Didn't sell. It didn't sell. Killed a studio. Yes. Killed a studio the day it was released. I went back. I was I was trying... When uh, Halo Wars had a five-year anniversary, I think, just a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Or maybe more. May have been, may have been longer than that. I think no. it was five. I think it was five. No. I think it was the fifth-year anniversary of Halo okay. Wars. And... Uh, I was I was looking back. It was like, let me see if I can find some people from um, what was that studio name? Ensemble. Ensemble. That is correct. It's like I wonder if I can find some people from Ensemble uh, to get back on the show and just talk about Halo Wars. I re- that was, it was oh loved that. Again, if you go back to the Halo franchise, our two favorites, or at least my two favorites, ODST, ODST Halo, Halo Wars. Wars. Yeah, the two games that really Bungie didn't do much with. <laughs> yeah. Well, they didn't center around Master Chief. Very true, yeah. Yeah, when you get outside of that storyline into the actual universe. I love the way ODST told its story. It was oh, a little yeah. bit convoluted, but I love the way that they but did once it. Once you start figuring it out, you're like, okay, that, that's kind of... The neat. main hub of the city, yeah. and then finding some position of where you could have that flashback yes. on, on, on whatever it was that you found to kind of move that story along. I love the way they did that. Yeah. I was, that was uh, just great. I think the perspective of playing as... Um, I think one of the things that the Halo universe suffered from is that you had always seen it from the perspective of a Spartan. And a Spartan is himself... A walking tank. Yeah, he's a walking tank. He's, he's worth a dozen men. So when all of the conflict in that game is calibrated around that one character, right? So that he does not feel overpowered. He feels empowered, but not overpowered. You begin to have some disdain for what should be really incredible difficulty, uh, a really overwhelming force, um, the Covenant, you know? So being able to play as a mere ODST, which is, you know, uh, Airborne Rangers, Special Forces, whatever, their version <laughs> of, um, of the military, and to be in a much more fragile position, a much less empowered position, and to feel your own mm-hmm. kind of weakness. You had to totally change your gameplay. Yeah. It's more about, you know, hit and run, hide in the shadows. Right. Not just walk in front of everybody and just, you know, mow everything down. You had to really know how to play as an ODST. And I think a lot of people didn't. They, they were playing like, well, I'm in Halo, so I'm going to play like Master Chief. Well, people mm-hmm. like to, the people like to feel powerful. It's it's a simple fantasy, but it's an effective one. And people, I think, a lot of people didn't really enjoy being. Uh, here's our new game where you play a less powerful version of of the. You other were working thing. in the store when that released, didn't weren't you? I think so. I think so. I think. Or was it? I don't remember. Yeah. I, I don't just remember know. you. I remember you telling us about some people coming in and saying, pointing at the box like this got Halo on it, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you play Master Chief, right? No. 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 But it's got Halo on the box, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's like the thing we we're talking about with Resident Evil. It's supposed to be a certain way because of that name. So with Halo, well, it's yeah. To be a now I think you can make an impassioned argument in in favor of Resident Evil, mm-hmm. um, and why changes don't necessarily make sense. But uh, to me, like Halo is more like 
Star Wars, once you get outside of the main lore and into the expanded stuff, not the main characters or even like the main class of Jedi, and you start seeing everything else, that's when it gets really interesting. Yeah, I thought I thought so too. I got yeah. no problems with Master Chief, but seeing everything yeah, but through Master Chief's eyes. And, like, not for nothing, but you had an entire game where, you know, Cortana wasn't yakking in your ear. Yeah. Right? It was it was dead silent. I, I think it uh, was creepy quiet because you, you were a silent protagonist, um, member of a squad, but you were silent, voiceless, faceless. And you had no comforting overwatch, no, no voice, no sense of outside information. You were very fragile and it, it was in its way uh a, a type of survival, survival horror. horror yeah so a very interesting take on it didn't didn't uh didn't do the series any favors in terms of um enduring you yeah. know, and, you know even like uh the movie the four dawn to dawn i thought that was interesting up until the end when master chief showed up and i'm like oh okay i honestly i kind of find him boring well he's, he's boring yeah so when, once he showed up and it was like it, everyone's focus about him, uh, I just really lost interest. So anyway, why are we talking about Halo all of a sudden? I don't know. I don't uh, know. Uh, strategy games, Halo Wars, strategy games yes. coming to consoles. Oh where we sure, got, that's sure. how we got off on that tangent. So anyway, that's how uh, that's how we work. If you want to guide us or direct us, you can do that. Call us three three four two seven two. Knock us off track. Yeah, nine two two eight three three four two seven two nine two two eight. We'll be back with the last half of in-game chat uh, in just a moment. Here's music from Killer Instinct. Back to in-game chat music. I didn't separate these too well. This is from Killer Instinct Two. Okay. Um, again, provided to us by RJ there. So thanks for all the the music cuts there, RJ. Appreciate You're it. Welcome. I need to bring some more whenever you need it. Uh, yeah. Well, that'd be great. Uh, let's go to the phones now and talk to Dennis, who's on the line with us. Dennis, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, Dennis. man. Hey, how you How's doing, it going? Man? Hey, going good. Well, what's up? Not much. Uh, so you want to know why Alphantari is remembered? Highly well. Uh, one of the primary reasons is this was 1996, it was right after Microprose broke up, which Sid Meier was a founding member of, and everybody was kind of like, well, here's Sid's two, what, what's going to happen? What, what's going on? And then he goes off to found Thorax's game, and we hear, oh, Alpha Centauri's coming out. I was like, what is this? What is this game? Is Alpha Centauri who? Okay, let's. Let's see what this is. It's civilization on another planet. It's but it doesn't have like you don't you don't have your default nations like you don't have India or United States or Mexico or whatever. You have a very well defined factions as opposed to just kind of anonymous and almost random kind of states, depending on how you play civilization. And a lot of lore went into it, a lot of thought went into like Okay, what would future tech look like? Because it was going, it was set basically eh, 
20 years in the future or so from that time. And just some of the descriptions on which is great to read. And, man, it's fantastic. You need to play it. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm probably going to now after, you know, the comments that I mean, James and Matt made. And, of course, you in the chat room as well. So, Yeah, it, it, I believe it's essentially the same mechanics of Fish 2, a few new things added in. So if you're at all familiar with Civilization, you should be able to jump right into it. Yeah, I'll take a look at that. I, w- I really will. Now that it's obviously, I have I have always been interested in it. I just haven't played it. That's the only that's the only thing is that I've always been interested, haven't played it, and then to see that they were doing this spiritual successor situation uh, was like, oh, great! This is this is wonderful. I was always hoping that they were going to do a lot of the times whenever you know they would tease, hey, we're going to announce something. It was there was always that Alpha Centauri two situation that they were hoping to hear from. But it would be yeah. Civ Five, or it would be it would be a new Civ game, or a Civ expansion, or something like that that they would get. Yeah, or, or some kind of add-on. I think somebody actually did a mod for Civ Five to essentially kind of make Alpha Centauri into it. But I'm, I'm really interested in this. It's, I haven't had much time to read up on it. There's not just, much to it, read up on. Yeah, <laughs> most I saw is like multiple planets. There will definitely be like a fungal uh, type planet, which is straight up Alpha Centauri. It's noted for having uh, xenofungus on it, so that's one of those things where it's like, okay, you have my attention. I think you're going to face the same problem that you would face um, venturing back in time for many of the other crazily revered games that are still worth playing. It's you know that it's good. You believe that it's good. You've heard it from enough people, mm-hmm. and you recognize that the gameplay that, that, that's on offer is uh, definitive and nearly perfect for your tastes. But it is so revered, you really question what it's going to be like after hearing years and years and years worth of praise to go back and have a look. Same as you would with, say, Planescape Torment. Right, it's the kind. Yeah. It's the same kind of thing. I'm not not remotely the same kind of game, but the same sort of thing where it's like, no, 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 you have to play this. You never played this. What's wrong with you? You have to play this. You'll love it. It's great. It's perfect. Still holds up. Go get it. Go to Gog. Pick it up. Play it. It's magnificent. It's perfect. And you're like, yeah, yeah. I've been hearing this forever. I know. I believe it. Um, those things make me very. They make me very hesitant. What if I don't react correctly? What if I? I have that uh, same issue, like when it comes to movies, like you know, when you hear about classic. Yeah, high backlash, basically. You, yeah, you're getting, you're getting oversold on it, essentially, it, or well, not oversold, just you're you're getting so much feedback on it that it's just like, when I okay, f- I get it, it's great. There's yeah. no way it can possibly live up to the expectations. Yeah. I've been sold on by every single human being on the planet about this. When I finally saw Citizen Kane, I was just like, oh, that was it. Uh, okay, you know. Oh. And, and Citizen Kane, you know, well, I mean, the thing of it is, that's the first of its kind to do what it did. Oh, yeah. But, I you mean, know, I, I've seen other movies that are like is that. that example. I, I've seen other movies like that, like, you know, Kurosawa stuff that I'm totally in love with. But that one for me was just overhyped over the years. That was just like, meh. You know, okay. It was all right. So I, yeah, well, I'm, I mean, a, I'm afraid yeah. of that, like, when it also comes to games or other any kind of media that, like, if you've missed it out in the first run... And then, like, years later when you've been told, like, what kind of horrible human being you are for not experiencing it. And then you try it, and you're like, if it's anything less than the most spectacular thing ever, then you're just like, well, what's kind of wrong with me? Well, that's kind of like the thing with me in uh, Final Fantasy. I mean, when I tell someone I don't care for Final Fantasy, it's just, it's, the genre is just not for me. Yeah. I mean, when I hit a button yeah. to attack and I have to wait my turn, that irritates me. When I hit attack, I want you to swing a sword, shoot a gun, do something. Don't sit there and say, oh, i got, I got to wait for him to wait his two turns before I can do anything. Uh-uh. That's not going to work for me. So I don't like Final Fantasy like that. So when people, uh, when I tell people about that, like you say, they're like, what is wrong with you? Why do you not like this game? Well, it's mm-hmm. not for me. So with Citizen Kane, was it the same thing? Was it the drama just one for you well, or just, something like that? Yeah, or? it was so overhyped. I, I knew, obviously, from years of living that, you know, the, the end, I knew mm-hmm. what Rosebud was. Okay. So it wasn't that big surprise. It was just, I found it boring and, you know, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Just one is in, it didn't hold my interest. Yeah, I mean, I you know, everybody, you know, AFI says the you know number one movie of all time, 
And I was like, I could think of better movies. Yeah. I mean, I gave, like I said, I gave FF a shot, but yeah. it just wasn't for me. You know, I mean, some people say the same thing about Final Fantasy VII. It's one of the best games, one of the best JRPGs ever. You know, and you've got to play this. And then if it's not your, if it's not your jams, it's just not your jams. Mm-hmm. Well, in this specific instance, I think we're recommending to Scott something that actually really should be his jam. <laughs> or at the very yeah, least, this, his jelly. This is something that sh- should be, like, right up there kind of in his lip. <laughs> right, well, yeah. It, yeah. It, 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 yes. It's in his wheelhouse. It's something that, you know, looking back almost 20 years now, it's not something he's going to be like, oh, gee, what's this game? Oh, you know, this, I think for Scott, this will be something, you know, you enjoy. I think it will be, too. I mean, I'm looking forward to it, um, to kind of going in there. And going in with the mindset, just like I go in when I go into Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, which is, this doesn't, this doesn't look like anything that I'm playing today, but it's really fun to play. So, um, you know, I'm kind of going in there with, with, with that mindset and with that hope of it. Um, so, but yeah, i I'll definitely give it a try. Definitely give it a shot. And, and, and regardless, I'll be doing this Civilization Beyond Earth thing Anyhow, so if I don't get it from Alpha Centauri, hopefully I can get it from the from what is billed as the spiritual successor uh, to Alpha yeah. Centauri. Because if I'm excited about that just from a trailer that has no gameplay footage, I would hope to think that I'd be as excited just to go back to the source and go there. So anyway, uh, appreciate you calling in, Dennis. All right, thanks, guys. Hope thanks we'll so see much. you next week. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Take care, man. We'll see you later. And if you'd like to get in touch with us, we got about 15 minutes left or so. You can call us, 334-272-9228. Uh, what were some of the other things? Matt brought in some instruction manuals. I was, uh, yeah. We talked about this, I think, last week. Last week we did. Uh, just how, number one, games nowadays don't really come with instruction manuals at all. But uh, the quality of you know the instruction manuals from back in the day, I was going through some stuff uh, at my you know, parents' house, some old boxes and everything. And I found them, and I was like, "Wow, look at these! It's you know some old LucasArts stuff from uh, Jedi Knight, uh, Mysteries of the Sith, and uh, X-wing versus a uh, Tie Fighter, plus the uh, Homeworld uh, little novella, and uh, the one from Undying. And so, I mean, they're just really interesting things. How you know that they have the history, they have uh, you know backstory. They're in some of them are even in color, you know, and." Yeah. W- one of the things that I think is interesting is that um, this is going to sound stupid, but that they were instruction manuals. Yes, mm-hmm. they games didn't they did the tutorial wasn't as much a part of the gameplay experience as it was in as the it manual. is now. Yeah, it you yeah. had to you had to you know Read attend a to little the bit instruction you know, manual. Let me mm-hmm. see how to play the game. Let me see what the bindings are. Right, you know because it's everything's right in here. In this manual, let me see. All right, this gives me a little bit of backstory. This tells me kind of what I need to be doing. And you get in the game, and you're just sort of thrust in there. You know, you're expected to have read yeah. or or be able to read the instruction yeah. manual. I mean, uh, thinking back uh, for Dark Forces Two, Jedi Knight, I mean, the very first thing after the cutscene, uh, you know, the live action guy, uh, there's a um, a Regis, you know, shooting at you. Oh yeah, yeah. And so and if you, if you sk- yeah, I. If you like skip through everything and you didn't read the manual, no, it's like, like no, you what just, do I do? No, you're done. You're done. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're completely done. But nowadays, everything's so handheld. You know, they hold your hand through everything. That well, you know, I mean, to be fair, they didn't. They didn't just decide. You know, oh god, I hate manuals. They're so cool, and I hate them. Let's burn them. It wasn't. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like that. You know, yes. nobody. As quaint as it is, and beautiful as it is in certain respects. It, I can agree that maybe the best version of, of the idea of a game is that everything you need to know is contained within the experience. Mm-hmm. That's where you get the tutorial. I just yeah. think the tutorial should be able to be skipped. I think that a tutorial should be, it, I think a tutorial should be invisible. Yeah. I think it should be absolutely invisible. I believe that a very well-designed tutorial something should be 100% in context and not jarring it should be it should be silky smooth it should be over with relatively quickly and then i don't know maybe uh, on a on a replay you have an option to do yeah. it but uh, cuz i know what you're saying yeah I, I saw a video a while back ago they're talking about um, basically the super metroid and like the opening very l- uh, opening level on the the spaceship 
it it's, that is the tutorial. It tell it basically lets you know how to play the game, but it doesn't point it out. It doesn't say you know press X to do whatever. You know it. You have to. You know you're you're faced with a challenge of oh let me lo walk this direction. Let me jump over that and everything. And it was it was invisible like you said. Right. And that was one of the better ways if you could you incorporate it into level design instead of just World One One of Mario. Yes. Everything you was needed to know. It was right everything there. you needed to know. It was the acorn from which. But if they would have done Mario nowadays, like er, like you take two steps and a little window would pop up, you know, to you know move uh, right, you know, press, you know. No, sure, it'd sure. Be annoying. Well, but that's very much to the point that it should be slipstreamed right into th yeah. to the experience. It should be fully in context and fully invisible. And again, I believe that the uh, the main. I mean, they're quaint. That's what they yeah. are. They're quaint and they're cute and they're fun for us because. I, yeah, I don't know. We used to tear open the package and read them in the back seat on the way home when <laughs> we were nine, you know? Yes. Um, or, you know, when you grow up and you have your own place, you, like, you get home, you tear off the packaging, and you go to the bathroom for a little while or something, <laughs> and you sit there with the instruction <laughs> manual, you know? Well, I mean, whatever, man. I'm only laughing because that's what it did. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, like, I'm not, like, there's no kind of fiction or anything, Look, man, it's right? Called, it's called the reading room for a reason. Yeah. Yes. You know? And it's like, God, oh, I, I don't really have to go to the bathroom or anything, yeah, but uh, <laughs> Got so where else am I going to read this? <laughs> yeah, but now your manuals are not even manuals. They're little pamphlets, maybe a two-page fold-out I did, Dude, I don't even have them. I don't They hardly ever things. show up. The only thing that yeah. shows up in the box anymore is like DLC free, free offers from yeah, yeah. Offers, partners. DLCs, things like that. And, um, you know, a two-day trial of Xbox Live or whatever, you know? Yeah. yeah. Or an example of uh, MLB The Show, uh, the manuals on the disc. Oh, yeah. You load up the game. A lot of them are doing that one. You got to load up for the game, and then the icon above it is manual, digital, the digital manual. Man. Yeah. yeah. And, and PC games, yeah. a number of years ago, started doing PDFs that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah. I, I mean, I, I guess I totally understand it when it comes to uh, pricing. It's easier to do that. It's less money to print it out and everything, have that in every single box, especially more people going towards digital distribution. It makes sense. But at the same time, there's just something, you know, quaint about, yeah. about holding. It. Yeah, I know. You know. Anything, like that, anything like that being a collector's edition anyway now. Yeah, so. you yes. make a good point. Yeah. Now, before we lose him again, let's get Ninja Bibbs on the phone. He called in earlier, but apparently a storm that he's going through is knocking him off there. Uh, Bibbs, you there? I am. Hey, where, where are you calling from? Colorado. Colorado. Oh, wow. Got some bad weather or something up there? Uh, we've got something rolling in. So I'm, some sort of freak storm. It's supposed to snow tomorrow, too. So. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember that. What's uh, Thanks for calling in, and yeah. what uh, what do you want to talk about? Oh, I overheard you guys talking about the manuals, and I agree completely. I enjoyed getting the manuals when I was a kid. You know? did you, uh, like, okay, yeah, when you were, I was about to say, did you go to the reading room? Yeah, the reading room, backseat to the car, you know, however <laughs> went. Wherever. <laughs> And it, it does make me sad to see the you know games these days being released with like a two pamphlet, hey, put your game in, turn on system type thing. Yeah, or and just a picture of the controller and yeah, the map exactly. And, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean it's you know it, it is a little disconcerting, but I, I remember gaming back when like uh, the old Star Wars games were out on PC. You had lore in those games. You yes. had you know storyline in those games before you actually started playing. Yes. So and it, it is kind of sad to see that happen, but like everybody's saying, because of the, the digital media and the digital distribution, it's you know that's the way everything is going. That's the norm now. now I remember the uh, original Zelda on the Famicom in the Japan and the Japanese in the Japan, yeah, in the Japanese version for the Famicom. Uh, one of the uh, enemies, the the rabbit, the big ears. You know, they mentioned how um, sound affected it, and if you know, that was the clue. Man, and the and the art in those instructions. Yeah, the books art in those um, always like made the, whole the character look a lot more so much awesome, <laughs> evil or more. Uh, yeah, exactly. So much better than when you actually came upon him. But yeah, in the game. I mean, <laughs> but, but that was something. You know, like the artwork that we knew as Link or as Zelda or Ganon and stuff like that. You knew from the manuals or Mario because Mario on the super on the NES was not the Mario that was drawn that we you know the fully realized you know cuz he's you know 8 bit pixels so when you see that representation of it that's what i think of Mario mm -hmm. and you know since then we have been able to you know polygon and you know make them look like how i've always seen them in my head even though that's not how he looked on the tv yeah no i agree and like like you were saying sometimes you get concept art for the character you're playing or the enemies but you know it, like 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 you guys were saying, digital distribution is killing the way of the man. So now we're gonna have to stick with strategy guides, or we're gonna have to stick with 
uh, you know, just concepts that we see before the game is actually published. Yeah. And then, you know, we're going to have to go that way and, again, use our imagination to make sure that's what we see in the game. Yeah, I think the other thing that we used to get for free in the manuals that now come separately are the uh, the art of game you know, yeah. the art of game title now is what you get mm-hmm. as yeah. a as a collector's bonus. Yeah. Where whereas those yeah. concept drawings of enemies and stuff were always in there in the manual, giving you a description of the enemy. That's right, or yeah. or, or whoever it was. Uh, but now yeah. they're t- that's relegated to let's sell that separately. Let's get a publisher for it. Uh, you know, and and there you go. The art of you know whatever the game is. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the other reason why I called you guys was to let you guys know that you'll have a dedicated viewer come a week's time because my time in the service for Uncle Sam is coming to an end. Oh. So, at least three weekends out of the year or out of the month, you guys will have me there listening, communicating, you know, hanging out and just enjoying the conversations so, that I've always enjoyed uh, before I joined up. Where exactly in Colorado are you, if you don't mind me asking? Colorado Springs. Okay. All right. Like, I'm legitimately... Like, Wasn't Dave there? Wasn't that, wasn't that where Dave was stationed? Is yeah, it, then, he, <laughs> then he got moved to... Uh, he, he got moved up to California, if yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah, he's Is over that where, in California uh, now. Buckley? Uh, Buckley's out here. You got Buckley, Peterson, Fort yeah. Carson, Shriver. You got a whole bunch of Air Force bases out here, plus the Army base. Yeah, I got a, a friend of mine that actually got transferred over to Buckley. Oh, well, hey. You know, small world. Yeah. <laughs> small, <laughs> small military. <laughs> yeah, I remember you guys had like just before I left. I'd, I told you guys I joined up, and you guys had big support from me going and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. So I figured I'd tell you guys, hey, you know what? I'm coming back to the civilian life, and I will be on my Xbox, on my computer. You're gonna be streaming some stuff because I know you've been doing that. <laughs> yeah, actually, I took a little break from it because um, my computer's giving me some issues. So I made some upgrades, made some changes, streaming some more League. I actually just got a uh, a capture device from Hapog. And I'll be streaming my Xbox a little bit more until I can get an Xbox One or a PlayStation Four. So, what are you playing? Some competition. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. What are you? Uh, <laughs> you, you you're, you're fine, man. Don't worry about it. What are you? Uh, what are you planning on playing? Um, right now, I'm just killing time with Ghosts. Uh, I know Titanfall came off the of 360 here like a day or so ago. I and think I might be picking that up. I, but I have a feeling I'm going to be going through a backlog. Yeah, red red box that for the 360 before, before you, you put the money down. Give them yeah. any money. I, I I I picked it up. I played for a couple of days, and I was uh, no comment on the actual design of the game. Overall, I still think I could have fun with it. I did. I did not like that port. I I really really didn't. The texture streaming didn't seem good. I don't know if there were network issues over Xbox Live because it was brand new release. You know, it was a brand new release or something like that. But I found it to be. Um, a little uncomfortable, a little stuttery. Um, the frame rate of the game itself was fine, but it did, the texture work was less than what I wanted. So, really? Yeah, I I wasn't a huge fan of it, and I, I there were issues with it that uh, that I blamed entirely on the game. You know, r- kind of ruining my fun. I had a really really hard time coming to terms with it, but uh, I have had a hard time coming to terms with every version of Titanfall. So, <laughs> it could just <laughs> be me. Awesome. But, uh, I was going to say, you also do have a hard time coming to terms with a lot of games. I, I really, really do, and I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm easily aggravated in my old age. <laughs> so, But I'm just saying it is available uh, on a trial basis at the uh, at, at ye old red box. So All right, well, give I that a go I, before you decide which version you want to play on. Yeah, I was saying, and this is the reason why I, I enjoyed your show so much. You, know, you guys actually gave insight from gamers, not... You know, a journalist who oh, yes, is a gamer, but they're also doing this to make money. You guys are doing this for we are the game and just clearly love. not making money. Yeah, so. <laughs> somebody wants to pay us, we're open to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if if Bob Titanfall wants to come in and pay us a bunch of money to talk good about Titanfall, uh, sure, <laughs> I'll take hey, that I'm, money. I'm pretty sure. Sh- I'm pretty sure we'd all do that if somebody showed up and said, "Hey, here's a couple hundred thousand dollars to yeah, here, you know, here's some money hats." Yeah, <clears throat> but uh, well, hey, man, we appreciate you calling in, and we appreciate uh, you know getting the uh, dedicated viewer listener thing out of you there as well. So <laughs> we really appreciate hey, it. And like I said, you guys give me good feedback. You guys give me good entertainment, and you guys are also some of you are on my Xbox Live friends still as Xbox One users. But hey, you guys are still there, and we used to play a lot of games together. So well, hopefully we cool. can start doing that again, man. So. Yeah. Oh, really appreciate yeah, it, and uh, hopefully we'll hear from you again uh, next episode and episodes in the future. 
Yes, definitely. You will. Thanks, man. Take care. You too. Bye bye. Right, bye, guys. All right. Well, uh, and we're almost to the end there. What was the other thing? Uh, you know, I brought up that art book specific thing because I've got an art book, The Art of Last of Us, sitting on my table oh, at the house. Okay. And I know that uh, Nathan had mentioned the fact that they were doing a remastered. Yeah, they, they PS4 are doing, version. Um, a, a remastered version for the PS4. Yeah, it'll include the DLC, I believe. Yeah. Um, probably be, I think, digital day one, but that's not anything out of the ordinary think, for them. Yeah. Uh, as of late, you still haven't finished Infamous. I have not finished Infamous. That's fine. I'm not. I'm not. You may feel bad. I, about I that, played but I'm a little bit more on. about it. I got real grouchy at it, and I was like, "No, <laughs> I'm gonna do uh, something else." Where'd you get grouchy? Uh, I don't like the guys later with the with the concrete. I don't like them. They really make me mad. I really don't like an evolution of a common enemy that negates 80% of the powers you've spent a game mm-hmm. developing. Mm-hmm. I don't I just don't like that. I understand that you have to counter my ability my that my power bloat has to be countered in some way uh by enemy characters, but when essentially 80 to 90% of everything uh, of the arsenal that I've amassed is now useless just because Something has changed with the environment or with the enemies or something like that. Someone essentially flipped a switch, and most of what I've been doing now is it just doesn't work anymore. And it's, mm-hmm. ah, that was in bad mood. That was in bad mood. Still pretty, so I just ran around in circles. Yeah. You know? No, it's <laughs> a pretty. very pretty game. It's just not a very good game. It's not a very good game, actually. Yeah. That's very sad. I, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of grouchy about that. Yeah, too. I finished the whole thing on the uh, evil side uh, uh-huh. of situations, and. You know, it, it took me a bit to clear out the city itself, like, to clear every single point. Mm-hmm. But once I did that and actually did the story missions, very short. Very yeah. short. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And un- and I understand that, you know, I'm probably, that's probably not the way you should play the game is to clear out everything and then do the missions. Because once I finished the game, that's when I got my very final power. I had nobody to use it on. Yeah. Right. It was, it was. I had that same problem. Wow. So yeah, I thought that was bad. I think that's just bad design anyway. It is. Yeah, it is. I mean, to have your your final boss fight is the one that grants you that power. Of, yeah, but of that's the, the last only one. one really that you. But use that's it the on. final boss fight. That's, that's it. The rest you got grunts to, to to filter out with. Yeah, new abilities you have no one to, no one to practice it on. Yeah, that's bad. So, I mean, I'm okay with it, but it's not. Mm, it's nothing not. like what it could have been. Unfortunately, it's. Uh, technically very pretty, but not much else. I, I definitely say I, I think they sort of rushed the end. They they didn't really know where to go with it. I think. So I'm not. Did you did you do good or evil? Evil. Okay. And I'm I'm doing good right now. Yeah. Uh, I was just the opposite. I'm, you know, I did evil. I mean, good. But now I'm playing through as evil. Yeah. What did you think about how it? Uh, what did you oh, think it, about it? Uh, the the ending, like yeah, uh, Nathan hit it on the head. It was it just felt rushed. You know, you finally get that. I was wondering, what's the fourth power? What's the, then you get to the last boss, and like, oh, interesting fourth power. Uh, the way that they kept on throwing The other you. thing is, here's the other thing. The boss that you fight yeah. has all these different modes of that power. Yes. That you don't get. Yes. <laughs> so You don't get any of that. That's because she took years of training. Uh, Whatever. Well, yeah. <laughs> you get your powers from the from the boxes of electricity sitting out in the uh, random place. Yeah. That's not, all she did. It's not supposed to make sense. But it uh, doesn't, so. Yeah, well, yeah and exactly. the way they kept on throwing the powers out at to you so quickly for that last fight. And then like you said, when you're done, you're like, Oh, well now you can explore the rest of the city, but I've already explored it. I've already unlocked everything and so it was kind of like, to me it's like a wasted opportunity and a wasted power. Sounds like a setup for DLC. It does. Mm, that's a good point anyway thanks everybody for joining us in the chat room as well as everybody listening on the stream or even on the radio there thank you to everybody who grabs us each week from iTunes or however you get our show for later use we really appreciate it head over to ingamechat.net you can join us on Twitter Facebook our forums at colonyofgamers.com we'll throw up our battle tags up there you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and if you're on Steam we've got a Steam group you can join up with over there and play games with us and other listeners uh, like Ninja Bibs who called in so anyway thanks everybody we will see you next week have uh, have a great week and we'll see you next weekend here's music from King of Fighters 98 by the way <laughs>